Good afternoon. So we're beginning an epic adventure. We just gassed up the truck. We've got uh, the truck over here with the camper and we have some grizzly bear photos that we're going to get on this trip. A little different than the last trip when we went by boat. And now we are in Clinton, British Columbia and we're about to leave the asphalt get onto the gravel roads in the back country of the Chilcotins, which is my favorite place in British Columbia. And we have a big river to cross. There's a special point in time on every back road trip. And it's that sudden transition that happens when the truck leaves the safety and predictability of the asphalt road and starts a new journey on an unpredictable dirt road. This is when the trip truly begins. Great landscape photos do not happen by accident. You can't create them by taking pictures out the window of the truck. Those are called snapshots. This trip was the result of hours of research that would take us deep into one of the most remote locations in Southwest British Columbia. Our journey will take us across three completely different climate zones. We begin in the Caribou region, which is the land of moose, lakes, grasslands, and cattle. If you are watching this video on YouTube and you want to explore, create, and inspire, and if you love adventure, then please click the subscribe button right now. After four hours of driving off-road without seeing a single human, we finally crossed the mighty Fraser River on a single-lane steel bridge. This is where the climate changes to semi-desert, dry grasslands. And after another four hours of driving, we reached our photography destination. Well, we drove for eight hours yesterday and finally ended up right here where we camped for the night. But I really want you to see where we are. Just look at this. It's the Horseshoe Bend of British Columbia. An amazing place, not in a park, no fences telling you where you cannot go. Let's see what Leah is doing inside the camper. Hey. Good morning, Leah. And Good what's morning. for breakfast? Well, we're having a simple one. It's going to be toast with peanut butter and jam and three raspberries each. <laughs> So let's get at it. You certainly can't beat this place. I started hunting around for my first composition of the day. I was looking for something with balance and symmetry, which is probably my favorite landscape composition style. I need to take a panorama photo here. I want to try and fit in everything that is down below me and there's a nice bend in the river, but I cannot fit it in. There's just too much height that I need and too much width. So for this reason, in order to get extra height, I put the camera up in portrait mode so it's standing up on end and that will give me more height for my panorama. And then as well, I'm going to be rotating the camera head and probably take about five or six photos and then that way I can fit in everything in the scene before me. I want to make sure that my camera is in manual mode when I do this because I don't want the camera changing any settings in between shots. I want to make sure that it's in manual focus. We don't want the focus changing either and I want to set the focus point in, uh, at such a distance that my foreground which is this brown grass at my feet that it will also be in focus. I love taking panorama photos. When you take a pano, you can fit in so much more of the scene into one very high resolution image. And this image worked out perfectly. It was tack sharp in the foreground all the way to the background. I was absolutely blown away by the beauty of this place where we had just camped for the night. To be perched on the edge of such a high cliff above a glacier water river with beautiful turquoise color tones was simply stunning. And the best part of all is that we were the only people there, which is my favorite type of backcountry camping. It was time to head to our second photo location. 
and we couldn't believe what we found because this place had its own stories to tell. When I was flying the drone, I spotted this old abandoned homestead on the edge of the river, and it's pretty incredible. Let's take a look over here where I can see that there is an underground sort of, I don't know if this would be their fridge, but take a look at this, let's go inside. Wow, I wish I had my light because I can't see a thing, but this is not like a big fridge. It's, I don't know if this is cabin space or what, but it's really cool. And look at these connections where they squared off the end. I, I don't think it's quite tongue and, it's dovetail. These are dovetail connections on a log cabin where they squared off all of the logs. Major attention to detail. This has got to be way over 100 years old, long since abandoned. What are the stories that went into this cabin? Like, kids were born here, people died here. Wow, if this cabin could tell stories, there must be some great stories in here. It's been abandoned for a long, long, long time but the view that they had out the door is epic. So I'm trying to get a photo with the house behind me and the river in the same shot. And while I'm down at this level, I can't get the river in the shot. So there's a hilltop behind you and we're going to hike up to that and see if, see if we can get the river and the building in one photo. So after a little bit of hiking, I found a composition I like. The reason I like it is because uh, we are high enough that you can see the river and we're low enough that we're not looking directly down onto the roof of the building. And it's got that really nice aspect of storytelling to this. It just speaks of old and homestead and the very ancient past. So another thing that I discovered while the drone was in the air was a beautiful curved leading line of the river. So we just parked the truck and we are going to hike to see if we can find a vantage point to take a really good shot of that curved leading line. I did get a shot with the drone, but I want a shot with my good Nikon camera. And yeah, this is looking steep. Surprisingly steep. Wow. No, come on. Oh yes. Beautiful. Yeah. This really is a beautiful composition. I love this curved leading line that's serpentine and we've got these nice flowers in the foreground. Wow. As 
as a photographer, don't you find it difficult to find compositions like this one here, where there's a beautiful twisty turny leading line that leads the eye of your viewer from the bottom of the photo right up to the top of the photo? Well, I can help you find these type of compositions. My name is Tim Shields and I'm the founder of Photography Academy and I have created a four-step system that literally helps you to find these types of compositions and then once you get here how to use very easy camera settings so that you're going to have a sharp photo that is perfectly exposed and then how to add drama to your photo the easy way with post-processing by painting with light. If you're interested in this and you want to transform your photography so you're taking photos that your friends and family are going to love and shower you with compliments, then click the link below, register, and you'll be watching my free web class right away, and I'll show you how you can find these compositions and take beautiful, stunning photos. Click the link right now. Join me as we drive even deeper into more remote country in the wilderness of British Columbia in search of the elusive grizzly bear. It was the fall and the grizzlies are feeding on salmon in a river. In the next video, we come almost face to face with a mother grizzly bear who charges us. It was exciting and you're going to want to see it. So be sure to click the subscribe button right now so you won't miss that video as soon as it comes out and click the little bell beside it so you won't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.